Regardless of whether you care more about precision or accuracy, you need to do some sort of clock synchronization. And this is a notoriously difficult problem to get exactly right. The question is, if you have a local clock that's incorrect, either because it is inaccurate or it has drifted too far away from the other clocks in the system, you need to fix it. Typically, you can only do this periodically because fixing a clock usually requires some sort of network message and you cannot saturate the network with timekeeping requests. So you usually get some sort of periodic access to a clock server and either it's a clock server that knows the global time or it's a node within a distributed system that somehow has been asked to make sure all the clocks are in sync. There are distributed protocols as well, but that's beyond what we'll talk about. If you have a local clock that's wrong, you have a choice to make. How do you fix it? And there are two ways to fix it. The first way is state correction. State correction is fast forwarding or reversing to the correct time. So if you have a watch that you want to change or a digital clock you want to change and you use the go forward, go backward buttons, that's state correction. You basically jump forward or backward. That's easy to implement, but the problem is that any underlying system operation has just had a potentially huge discontinuity in time. If the system is in standby mode, maybe that's okay, but if there's some sort of control loop or real-time operation or date stamped records going on, that state correction can be a problem, especially if you go backwards and you have duplication of the same date timestamp at different actual times during execution. The alternate way to adjust time is to use rate correction. In rate correction, you don't actually fast forward back or forward. What you do is slightly speed up or slow down the local tick rate. So for example, if you have a software interrupt that's adding 53 to the local time every time there's a timer interrupt, maybe you change it to be 54 and it will run the clock a little bit faster before it's time to increment the second where you change it down to 50 and it'll run the clock a little bit slower. It'll take more ticks before it's time to update the clock. Rate correction permits the time to be slightly incorrect for a while while you're catching up. But the good news is that you were already bad to begin with and you're just slowly making things better. In practice with rate correction, it's a little trickier because you're actually running a clock rate control loop. At first, you have to catch the clock up to real time, but then once you have basically a match to externally validated time, you have to change the rate to sort of home in on the correct rate rather than overshooting. If you're on the internet, usually what people use is network time protocol. That's a time management service that is designed to keep all the clocks synchronized everywhere across the internet, and it does things like account for estimating the latency of network packets to and from time servers of the internet to get pretty good accuracy as well as good precision. It's complex and the behavior depends upon options, so this is something you really need to study before you use. If you have small processors or don't have internet connection, then you're gonna to have to look up a different way to do time service. Some protocols have this built in, other protocols you have to go find some software packages and do it yourself and, and it can get complicated. So this is something to consider when you decide to go on your own solution, what your plan is for clock synchronization.